You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Welcome back to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. This is Trevor. I'm the Coonhound Program Manager here at UKC, and I'm joined today by Alan Gingrich, the Director of Hunting Ops. What's going on, Alan? Well, not a whole lot other than it's Friday today. It's not our normal recording day, but it's Friday today, and it's 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 fine. We've got a great topic. I'm excited. Yeah, kind of. I've kind of been teasing this on uh, social media and uh, the forums the past couple, I guess, weeks now, uh, just talking about a series, talking about reproducers and last year we did an episode about this time episode 25 all the way back in november of last year where we talked about uh, the top producing dogs based on the number of pups that they produced and the, kind of the impact they had on the breed but it was kind of a short version it was all inside one episode we went through the reproducers list this is not going to be that no, nothing short about uh, the data that we've we've collected here to talk about reproducers. Oh man, you've got a ton of data that you pulled for this more than I can keep up. So I'm hopefully, I'm hoping you're going to steer the ship here a little bit and, and I'll add to it a little bit where I can here, but this is going to be fun stuff here. And it's more, we have our reproducers list that we, uh, that we list or post in or publish in the magazine, Kunan Bloodlines. Uh, but this is not that exactly. So we've got some uh, variations of that and oh, shoot, I'm excited to get into it. Yeah. When, one thing about it is it, what I, what really is the concept behind this for me is I wanted to look at the top reproducers of all time in each breed. And we're going to do that. We're going to do that for all seven breeds, male and female. Today, we're going to start out with the males. Um, and depending on how long we go, this could be a multiple parter, but I guess we'll see about that. But uh, and, and we're going to look at the top 10 of each breed. And it doesn't matter. There's no the historical list inside our, top, our uh, reproducers list that you'll see in the magazine or on the website has nothing to do with what we're doing today. Uh, the historical list that we're going to be referring to today, just we got, I got uh, data from all the do all the coonhounds of all time, and what it is essentially is the top ten in each breed based on number of title pups that they produced. Yep, and we've you know we did a uh, a topic on on uh, reproducers before, as you mentioned. Uh, one of the things that we we talked about there is the dogs that had produced the most offspring. You know, Lipper, as far as Kunan's, Lipper is number one and way out there. Mm -hmm. uh, today is, he's going to be in the conversation again today, but uh, it's going to look a little different for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of, uh, just to kind of give you guys a grasp of what we're going to be going through. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start out with the breed and we're going to go through the top 10 reproducers of all time. Give you a little bit, give you some numbers behind them, maybe a little information about each dog. And then we're going to see who could be next. Who yeah. could be the next? Who are the dogs of today that could somehow make their way onto this list or have an impact on the breed similar to some of these dogs that we're going to talk about today? And to do that, we've looked at a couple different things. We looked at our current reproducers list that's uh, published every every month on our website um, and in Coonan Bloodlines. Um, I actually put out some posts on on Facebook and on forums to try to get some feedback from people and got some people that emailed me some different dogs. And of course, me and you pay attention to what's going on and we kind of know who some of the hotter reproducers are on the scene. And then uh, our programmer, Carrie Schmidt, actually uh, ran me a, a little query that took a, took a while to compile this data. But essentially what it is, is what uh, dogs have produced the most titled, hunt titled dogs in the past 12 months. So from December 1st of last year to essentially December 8th of this yeah. year. Yeah. So yeah, it's a, you know, you got to be a pretty good barometer. Yeah, you know, and you know, I just want to add here before we even get started. You know, I I speak for myself here, and I think you'll agree to and on your behalf as well. We are not the experts on breeding or anything like that, and we're not uh, we're not suggesting that or anything like that. We just have a whole lot of data that we are going to talk about for other folks to create those conversations and and hopefully uh, hopefully provide some of that actual data. And facts and, and numbers and this and that that will uh, uh, generate a talk about yeah reprodu or reproduction records. It's it's one of my favorite topics when it comes to dogs and I love pedigrees and things like that and and reproduction is obviously a big part of that. And we're counting on the listeners being yeah. interested in that stuff too, and I think they will yeah. be the reproducers. Uh, podcast the last one did really well and that was kind of my thinking that every, towards the end of the year i should try to do something like this and 
I don't know. I may get a little carried away this year, but I hope you guys enjoy listening to this. But we're going to start out right. We're going to start out right on the bang with the uh, with the most popular breed of coon hounds as far as competing in events, and that's the tree and walker breed. Uh, try to catch your attention right off the bat with this. And like I said, we're going to start with our our uh, top reproducers of all time based on number of titled pups. So it doesn't matter. Percentages doesn't matter. Number of pups produced doesn't matter in this exercise. Only the number of titled pups. And the number one coonhound reproducer of the Tree Walker breed and of any breed all time is Grand Champion, Grand Night Champion, Rat Attack. Rat Attack's up there, number one. <laughs> number one dog here on our thing. I'm not surprised. I knew it'd be one of these track man, Rat Attack, uh, you know, Sackett Jr., one of them's got to yeah. be it, you know. But there, there you go, Rat Attack. Yeah, 569 total pups. And that includes uh, night champions and grands both. They're both counted whether they're a night champion or a grand. 321 night champions, 248 grand nights. Yeah, just just absolutely crazy. Oh, 20, just under yeah. just under 2,500 pups total. Yeah, the, the percentage here is what is so impressive to me. Obviously, 569 titled pups, the most of any coonhound ever in our registry. Uh, twenty two point eight nine percent is crazy with that number of pups on the ground. It it's is just a crazy number. It me. is. It is. Uh, Rat Attack was out of a, a famous cross, really, uh, out of uh, Sackett Junior. and a female named Night Heat Dixie. Uh, the breeders on Rat Attack were Butch Lannerman and Don Heaven, and the owners Buzz Lynch and uh, Kevin Turner was listed back there. Yeah, and he was born in nineteen ninety four, so he's a mid nineties dog. Yeah, you know, and. Uh, Hey, that's kind of at the, at the time when I was really kind of really starting into the sport, you know, as far as competing anyways, and Coonhound's hard and heavy at that point, I guess. But, uh, and, and the name was synonymous back then, you know, but I, for some reason I was thinking he might be a little bit older than that, but 1994 is birthday to 1994. And just now since then, you know, it does, to me, it doesn't, that doesn't seem that long, but look at what that dog has, the impact yeah, kind of attack has had. Kind of still seeing. I mean, uh, Whitey was just a second in the world hunt just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Kurt Aaron and Buzz yeah. Lynch's Whitey dog. So he's still it, with, you know, it, you know, we'll talk about it some, but with artificial insemination and how far that's come over the years, some of these dogs aren't done adding numbers to their resume. Yeah. You know, those Night Heat dogs, that was a name that was synonymous to, you know, Night Heat, he's off of Dixie. And then obviously Rock River Sackett Jr., Frank Giddings. You know, anybody uh, that knows Treeing Walkers is, knows the name Frank Giddings, you know, Rock River uh, Rock River Hounds. And Frank is still, he's in northern Michigan, northern third of Michigan. Uh, I don't know what his age is. He's uh, probably in his 80s, I'm going to say, and still probably hunts as hard as I can guarantee he hunts harder than I do. Uh, he hunts <laughs> way harder than me, too. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, amazing what these men have done with some of the breedings you know from uh in the last 20 30 40 years absolutely and here's one rat attack number one number one moving on to number two with 519 total champion or uh night hunt titled dogs is grand champion grand night champion all grand track man out of uh not colonel style and rock river lady Owned by Kurt Aaron and Buzz Lynch. Yep, there's that Rock River name again. There you see Buzz Lynch again, Kurt Aaron this time, you know. But uh, 3,019 pups sired. So that's a little bit, a few more than Rat Attack did. But uh, 260 night champions, 259 grands, makes for a total of 519, 17, a little over 17% are titled. Here again, just like track, or just like uh, uh, Rat Attack. That's a pretty good percentage considering the number of pups overall pups there. Yeah. Yeah. A track man born in 2002. So kind of relatively new when you compare him to a lot of, we'll see a, a few dogs that are a little bit younger than that or uh, mm -hmm. later than that, but kind of new when you look yeah. at the full scale of things, a lot of them are in the eighties and nineties. Yep. Uh, now this is a 2000, November 2nd of 2002 is track man's birthday. Yeah. So that's a track man for you. Moving on to number three here. Grand Knight champion, Nocturnal Nailer. Again, a Nailer, one from 1990, kind of the heyday of when I think of uh, stud ads and, and publicizing studs. That's kind of when I good think of his early sucker. 90s. Houndy is, houndy is, you know. Yeah. Good looking sucker and all those ads. But yeah. Nailer, second all time in uh, number of pups produced for Coonhounds with 3,844 pups sired right now and had a total of 485 
night hunt titled pups for a 12.61 percentage just yeah. a lot of a lot of dogs on the ground there you go 324 night champions for nailer and 161 grand nights makes up that 485 total titled pups Yep. 3,844 pups again. He is, he was sired by Grand Knight champion Yatkin Tar Rattler and his dam was a uh, dual grand lockdown lassie. Uh, he had a birth date of 1990, October 31st, 1990, owned, uh, owned, uh, and bred by Mr. Jess Dickerson, Garden City, Missouri. Big impact on the breed when you think about some of the dogs that he sired and he is a grandsire of even today. All these dogs yep. are that way. And I've hunted off of a lot of awesome hounds off of old Nocturnal Nailer. But a lot of color. He really put a stamp on his pups. Next dog here, the number four historical tree and walker reproducer. Born again in the early 1990s. This one's 1993 model. It's Grand Knight Champion Ball Stylish Hickory Nut Harry. It's uh, obviously off of Grand Knight Champion Hard Knocking Stylish Haze and Grand Knight Champion Schmierschel's Stylish Anna. There you go again. Both the sire and the dam are well-known uh, names in the Treeing Walker breed, both the sire and the dam. 478 total uh, titled offspring for Hickory Nut Harry. And uh, off he sired 3,235 pups. 261 of those were night champions. 217 were grand knights. That make up that 478 total, a uh, little over, uh, almost 15% of his uh, offspring were titled here again you know with that number that is that percentage is awesome uh born in march of 1993 bred by mr david fletcher and was owned by the uh late uh, timothy ball you know timothy ball was a a big influence in the walker breed and hickory nut harry was a big part of that one of the best stud ad creators of all time. Uh, and probably will always be. I don't think there's anybody that has before his time or after has been able to write ads like he did. <laughs> he was just a promoter. And, uh, you know, he had the uh, he had the uh, squallers, too. You know, Timothy Ball was, uh, he was a coon hunter. And, uh, uh, but yeah, number four here on our list, Hickory Nut Harry. Ball's stylish Hickory Nut Harry. A lot of these dogs that we're talking about today have are so recognized within the sport of coon hunting where you just know them by one name, mm -hmm. you know, Harry, mm -hmm. Rabbit, Track, yeah. Track Man, all track, that. Yeah. The next one uh, probably mo more than any other one, and that's Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion House's Lipper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A dog who has produced the most coon hound pups of any dog in uh, UKC's history. 5,145 pups hired. Really, nobody's even close. 3,800 is the not next even, closest. Yep, not even close. 294 night champions, 122 grand knights for a total of 416 titled offspring off a lipper uh, with a percentage of just a little over 8% there. But uh, yeah, that was a, a big name uh, for, you know, a lot of years ago, a long time ago, and still is House's Lipper. He's uh, That name is synonymous in coon hounds, period. Forget about the breeds, just House's Lipper. If you're a coon hunter, and especially if you've been at it a little while and compete a little bit, you've probably heard the name House's Lipper. And if you haven't, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You haven't done much research. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. he was off of a Grand Knight champion, House's Clint. And the, his dam was just a registered dog. House's Queen Lou was his, his mother. Born in June of 1981, bred by Mr. Joe House from Kentucky. Uh, Wilbert McAllister. And uh, Tom Hopkins were the owners. Uh, Tom Hopkins was the most recent owner, I guess, of Lipper. Yep. And you see, when you see pictures of Lipper, it's that one photo, and I think it's the photo they used in a lot of the ads where that dog has his head thrown way mm -hmm. back, you know. And uh, he had that, uh, he had those, just that treeing style that was, that was Lipper, you know, just a ball. I don't know if you've ever heard the audio. Yeah, I've heard that, some. You know, yeah. just a loud, a loud home. There's a lot of stories about old Lipper, but uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool here that we get to talk about these dogs and that they make this list like this. Still, still yeah. around. And that's what we're trying to do today. Yeah. Who are going to be the next dogs that they're talking about 30 years from now? Yep. Uh, next one here, a Lipper from the early 80s. We're going back to the early 90s here, a, a name that's already been mentioned today, and that's champion, Grand Knight champion, Rock River Sackett Jr. Sackett Jr. 
kind of low number of pups sired compared to the other ones on the list so far with just a, a touch over 2,000 pups sired, but 410 of them ended up uh, getting a, not, at least a night champion title. Yeah, just under 20%, 260 of his pups were night champions and 150 of them were grand knights uh, for the total of 410. Uh, he was sired by a Rock River Sackett. Uh, that's a grand knight. And the mother was grand knight champion PR Skeens Dolly. He was born in November of 1990, bred by Ernest Skeens and owned by Mr. Frank Giddings that we talked about a minute ago there. But uh, they called this dog Jay. That was his call name was old uh, Sackett Jr. Uh, I remember, so Sackett Jr. was known to kind of throw a lot of hard tree dogs that treed fast and hard, and that was kind of the stamp he put on a lot of his pups. I remember one time I drew Old Sack at his daddy in Dromesville, Ohio, uh, Dromesville, Ohio at an RQE a long time ago, and I think he was already eight years old or so, and he must not have got it from that side because I don't remember that Old Sackett really had a mouth or tr didn't tree quite like that, so it must have been on the Skeens Dolly side maybe, but uh, Sackett, uh, Sackett Jr. was a... Big big name in the breed, and and during that time, and he actually, he actually got hit on the road when he was still fairly young, yep. so he didn't get to produce. Uh, you know, if if it hadn't been for that, he would have probably produced a lot more pups. Who knows where he could have ended? Yeah, up. exactly, yeah. exactly. But here again, he put his stamp on the on the on the breed. Moving on to number seven here, and we're kind of getting into more modern day dogs. You know, we mentioned Trackman in 2002. Here we are at number seven, a dog that was born in 2007 already, and that's Grand Knight Champion Backwater Bone Collector. Bone Collectors, as uh, up to this point in time, sired uh, almost 2,300 pups, and uh, 373 of them have titled out. And those, those, these, some of these dog Bone Collector dogs are still competing today. That number is, is rising occasionally a, still. A lot of them, a lot of them, yeah. So 199 night champions and 174 grands in uh, at 373 total. So his percentage is just a little over 16. But uh, yeah, like, and that number is, like you said, is still going to continue to change there. But he was off of a dog named uh, just a night champion now, now Hubs Homer. Uh, who is a tightly bred dog? If I don't hold me to it, but I believe he was bred up pretty. He was bred up pretty tight, and then his mother was Grand Knight Champion, looking up stylish nowheres. Uh, but he was born in two thousand and seven, bred by Duke Prue of uh, Connecticut, and uh, owned by Mister Doug Compton from Arkansas. But yeah, here again, backwater bone collector, uh, very recognizable name in the Walker breed. Number eight on the list is a dog that was born just a year before that. It's Grand Knight Champion Turpin's Insane Cane, dog out of a famous, famous cross between two world champions. Talking about world champion X Junior and world and the youngest world champion still today, X, uh, uh, world champion Bolden and Turpin's Insane Jane. Yeah, she was a uh, turned out to be a, a a big time winner. Was the youngest, like you mentioned, world champion. I was on that cast in uh, uh, Portland, Indiana, when she won it. Did a bang up job. Came back the next year after that and placed second uh, in Tennessee, uh, Springfield, Tennessee. Came back second there, and uh, but yeah, X Junior. He was off of I believe he was off a of Naylor. Don't hold me to it, but I think he was off of old Nocturnal Naylor owned by Jess Jakerson, but uh, world champion uh, cross and and he produced uh, over a little over twenty one hundred pups, hundred and twenty eight night champions for Insane Kane. And 103 Grand Knights for a total of 231 titled pups, just a little over 10%, or a 10.6%, I guess, for him. Number eight, uh, was born in 2006, bred by Mr. Jess Dickerson and Russ Meyer from Missouri, and was owned by uh, none other than uh, James Turpin in Kentucky. Yeah. Very popular stud dog. A lot of uh, litter mates to cane or, or dogs from the same cross. I think they might have made that cross twice. Uh, or further down, not in the top, they didn't make the top 10, but if you look in the top 20, 30, you're going to see names like High Expectation, Insane X, Extreme X. There's a lot of different X dogs out there, and uh, Kane was just uh, the one that was able to accrue the most titled dogs, but this the cross between X Junior and Insane Jane has such an impact on the Tree and Walker breed. Yep. Number nine, getting close to, to the end of the historical ones here, is Grand Knight Champion Tequila Sunrise. Uh, Sunrise sired almost 1,600 pups, 1,586 pups, 
132 night champions, 83 grand nights for a total of 215. Yeah, just about 13.5% for uh, Sunrise there. He was off of uh, Dual Grand Rat Attack, our number one hound there. And his mother was night champion far as stylish silk. He was born in, uh, in March of 1999, uh, bred by Mr. James Farr, and was owned by Ashley and Randall Hopkins, Tequila Sunrise. And that's a name you heard uh, mm-hmm. a lot, you know. He's just another uh, a big name in the tree walker breed, and he also put his stamps on, on his offspring. Yeah. The kind of uh, partial to this bloodline a little bit, and the dog I have right now has a lot of sun going out of sun making history yeah. goes directly off Tequila Sunrise. And kind of like the way these dogs hunt, they kind of fit some of the style I like. Yeah, yeah. Number 10 here, one of the probably when I first got into coon hunting, uh, this dog was probably at the forefront by that time. Um, or maybe not, or yeah, I guess I was at the forefront at the time and still a name that is synonymous today. Uh, champion grand night champion booger hollow mojo yeah yeah he was one that uh he was uh running in the prina series and and uh won the triple the ukc triple crown a couple of years and uh, yeah 1759 pups sired to date 128 of them are night champions 84 grand knights for 212 uh, total titled pups and just a little over 12 percent uh titled uh, uh based on that uh number of pups 1759 he was off of grand knight champion davis's stylish harry's hammer and his mother was grand knight champion horse range stylish j-lo and that dog or uh, mojo was uh bred by elliot schuler of south carolina uh had a birth date of uh, october of 2006 he was uh kind of uh raised and trained by mr robert raxter in the hills of Tennessee hunting he hunts where where is it Brevard Brevard I think around Brevard uh uh Tennessee or uh is it North, North, North Carolina, Carolina North Carolina, Carolina. Yep. and in the hills yep. a place where I don't know that I would coon hunt if I lived there <laughs> maybe <But> fishing <laughs> that's yeah maybe but that's where old mojo was trained by Mr. Robert Raxter and uh he was later then sold to uh, Scott Angle and the J uh the late JC Ellis and uh here again he's He's, he's made his mark in the breed for sure as a not just as a winner but also as a as a sire yeah two you mentioned 212 total uh champion dogs out of mojo that's the cutoff to get into the top 10 of the walker breed there's only one other dog of any other breed that would be on, uh, on this list and that's uh swamp rooster we'll get to that to that later on but uh what a competitive top 10 and now the question is is there any is there any current sires out there that can that can yeah. Compete and, and possibly get on this list. Yeah, those are some big shoes to fill by <laughs> these ones we just talked about for sure. Absolutely. But I think there might be some kit contenders to at least make a good run at it. And we're yeah. going to talk about some possibilities today. Uh, starting out with our current reproducers, maybe our uh, current five uh, top reproducers. And these are dogs. Obviously, our current reproducers list is based more on percentages than it is overall numbers. So maybe these dogs don't have the, the total number of pups that it would require to get on this list. But uh, we got to give them a shout out for their reproduction abilities. Uh, first one is Grand Knight Champion Three, Grand Champion Mountain, Top Slow Talking Bowl, HTX Two. He's the current number one reproducer as of today. He's, he's produced 367 pups, with 56 of them being uh, titled. Uh, he's been on top of the current reproducer, reproducers list for a couple of years now. So good yeah, one for Bo. Owned by Mr. Randy Lester from uh, Virginia, I believe it is, right? Yep. Yeah, another one of those that is. Uh, uh, Bushwhacker, stylish bushwhacker. That's a name we hear a lot. Seven hundred fifteen pups for him, uh, eighty that are titled, uh, and um, uh, he was uh, bred by uh, uh, Mr. Steve Burkholder, known by Justin Davenport, Styler Sturry, and Shane Groves. But there's a there's a dog we hear a lot, you know, yeah. had, in the what in the TOC, and I think the World Finals had you know was up there as far as with the most offspring in those events mm-hmm. the last couple of years. Yeah, if yeah. he he's one I could see knocking sure. on the door. Yeah. Uh, next one here, uh, I'm not sure if if, he'll, if this dog could ever get there with the number of pups sired, but he's the current number three reproducer, and that's Grand Champion, Grand Knight Champion, Abbott Stylish Coma. 118 pups sired as of today, and 13 of them have made at least Knight Champion. Uh, that's a dog that uh, Kenny Abbott uh, bred, yep. and, bred and owns currently. Yeah, out of Virginia there, yep. Another one is Midnight Rider, Dual Grand Midnight Rider, currently number four. 180 pups on his list so far. He has 17 total uh, uh, titled uh, pups. 
Um, and that dog is owned uh, by Mr. Whitey Marshall of Kentucky, owned and bred by Mr. Whitey Marshall there. But there's a, another hound we see a lot today. Whitey's had a few yeah. good stud dogs. Yep, for sure. Next one here is probably out of some uh, some old uh, hairy blood who we mentioned earlier. Must be running through this dog's uh, lineage. You got Grand Night Champion Harry's Finley River Jeb. That's the current number five reproducer on our list. Jeb has 185 pups on the ground, and 14 of them have titled out. Uh, Jeb's owned by Chris Hardiman. Yeah, bred by Mr. Chuck Wells here, in Indiana. We see uh, Chuck still hunting, hunting a lot. You know, another one is uh, Backwood Shack National Grand Night Champion, Grand Night uh, uh, Dual Grand. There, I guess Hall of Fame. He cer- uh, currently sits number six, five hundred ninety-six pups for Shack, forty-five total uh, or titled dogs, and uh, uh, Redneck Mafia was his sire. Rats High Country Ann was the dam bred by David Greiner and owned by Cheyenne Cummings in Missouri over there on the Oklahoma line. But there's Shaq's another one. He's putting his stamp on a lot of dogs. And Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to give a little bit of a shout-out to Redneck Mafia, one dog that you won't see on a list like this where we compile numbers, but a dog that only had 139 pups on the ground and 41 of them have hunt titles. Yeah, that's just almost, under 30%. Just under 30%. That's really crazy. impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, if you if you watch any of our live shows over the past couple of years, whether it's tournament champions or world championship live shows, you're bound to have heard this name multiple times, and that's champion Grand Night champion R and R's Neosho Cuz. Yeah. Seems like this dog's always got a couple of them competing for major cha- championships. He does, and in, uh, just on the big stages, seems like his names come up a lot. Yeah, 549 pups for Cuz right now, 62 titled ones in. Uh, 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 Neosha River Rudy was his sire, and a little bit of Duchess was his dam. But a uh, 2009 model bred by Harold Benham and owned by Dale uh, Girdley, and then uh, Perry Robertson for Neosho Cuz R and R's Neosho Cuz. Yeah. Uh, the next one here is uh, just kind of a younger dog. This dog, uh, Mojo's Electric Rodeo, was just born in 2016, so still young yet. Uh, obviously won our world championship in 2020. I think it was 2020. Yeah. 2020. Yep. And uh, since then, I, this every time I check the dog's uh, performance pedigree, it seems like the pup numbers are rising and rising and rising. And when you get a lot of pups on the ground, especially if you get them in the right hands like they do, you're going to get some titled dogs. Yep. Wins the world championship in 2020. And I don't know if he was bred much before that, but 688 since then. Now that's a lot of pups in a, a lot short of them time. Are young. Yep, and already 19 of them are, to- or, uh, are titled at this point, and yeah, most of them are still young. Very young. You know, and he was off of Mojo Mason, who who is Mason, who is off of Mojo that we just talked about a little bit ago, and uh, Zip Stylish Gabby, but a 2016 model for rodeo, so he's not even that old, bred by Mr. T- uh, Tim Stevens and, and owned by Scott Engel and Randy Morgan. Uh, Scott's in Ohio and Randy's in Kentucky there, but electric rodeo, still being sought after a lot today for uh, in the breeding shed. Absolutely. Uh, next, the next three we have in a row here, we'll kind of pay homage to Kevin Cable and what he's done yeah. there in, in Indiana. The first one, of course, grand champion, grand night champion, big money. He just fell off our current reproducers list. Uh, I think uh, he's not being bred as much now uh, with little money and money in the bank being bred more often. But big money, 981 pups sired as of today, 96 total uh, yeah. dogs have uh, – Titled out. Yeah, he had a he had a famous daddy too, um, another world champion, Miami River Big D, big old open white uh, open spotted white dog, and his mother was Red Oak Diamond Ring, who uh, she was a she was a whippersnapper too, and and a good he's from a good cross and uh, and uh, he he did a lot of winning himself and and put his put his stamp on a lot of hounds too, bred by Mister Roger Miller, that's who owned uh, Diamond uh, Red Oak Diamond Ring and. Uh, this uh, big money is currently owned by uh, or was uh, owned by Larry Danner and uh, Kevin Cable Jr. Yeah, yep. right yep. there at ninety six, he's knocking on the door of a hundred, which is impressive in itself. But yeah. when you uh, mention that the next two dogs are off of him, that becomes even more impressive. Yep. The first one here is one they call Little Money, Grand Night Champion champion Money Max Out is his name in UKC, and he's already up to four hundred and seventy nine pups sired, with twenty nine of them being uh, titled out already. Yep, and uh, they're like you mentioned, bred by Mr. Kevin. Cable Jr. and Larry Danner, and, and is currently owned by Ammon Marner. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah. And the next one's also off of big money. This is a Grand Night Champion, Grand Champion, Money in the Bank. Kind of the new the new one that uh, Kevin is uh, campaigning out there. Still young yet. Yeah, not a mm-hmm. bunch of dogs on the ground yet, but it seems like he's breeding him more often now. 271 pups on the ground as of today. 
uh, six of them have made a uh, champion yet a dog that seems like a lot of people are seeking out right now. Yeah, you know, some of those top dogs we were uh, we were talking about Rat Attack and Sackett Jr. And those are dogs that are, you know, we're talking 20, 25 years ago and, and even back further than that with like Old Lipper and them, you know. But but now we're talking, you know, dogs like this, like Money in the Bank, uh, a dog that was just born in 2017. Mm -hmm. And uh, But here again owned, uh, he was bred by Mr. Mark McWhorter and uh, Kevin Cable is the owner here. Yeah. Yeah. Speak 2017. The next year, 2018, is kind of uh, a dog that you see everywhere right now. Frogger. Right? Yeah. Frogger. Hear his name a lot. Yeah. 428 pups on the ground already for Frogger, and 12 of them have already made uh, uh, hunt titles, and a lot of them are still very, very young. Yep. And uh, his full name, Davis, is Rosedale Frogger, uh, bred by Fred Bodenberg and owned by Birchall Davis Jr. Yep. But yeah, you're right. He is being sought after a lot right now in the Walker breed frogger. Yep. And then the one that's just kind of in incredible that they have this many pups producing, it seems to grow every day. If I didn't check it right before I came down here, it'd probably grown a little bit more. And that's World Night Champion, Grand Night Champion 2, Gray's Rackham Willie. Already over 1,400 and closing in on 1,500 pups produced by Willie. Yeah, and he's probably, as, as far as the most popular of these that we've just mentioned here, you know, kind of up-and-comers as far as his all-time, uh, he's right up there at the top of this list here. So, yeah, bred, uh, owned and bred by Mr. J.R. Gray from Kentucky, 2014 model, Willie was, and 1,461 pups. I think when he won the world championship in 2018, I think he had two litters on the ground. And now look at him, four, almost 1,500 pups already, and 107 titled already. Yeah. And that's just, we're talking just UKC titled. He, you know, he's he's got dogs in every registry that have won big in other registries as well and have, have won a lot of money and, and, and this, in our case, a lot of titles. But, yeah, he is, he's one that could get up there and, and uh, get shuffle things up there in our top five, I bet. Yeah, I think. Or he, I would think. He can make a serious run yeah, out of it, I think, if yeah. he keeps on this trajectory. Yeah, but, man, what you know, these dogs we're talking, every one of them is – is a name that uh, anybody that is in the Coonhound world has any experience or, and especially a, a, a familiar with the Treen Walker breed. These are uh, famous names, and, uh, and even these up-and-comers, I say up-and-comers, some of these current uh, ones are, you know, have been very successful. Yeah. You've probably thought about buying one out of some of these. If you're listening, you've probably thought about buying one out of one of these dogs at some point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, one other thing that we want to talk about real quick about the tree and walkers before we move on to our next breed would be the dogs that uh, produced the most in the past calendar year. So that's December 1st of 22 to the 1st of December here in 23. And Willie heads that list up with 40 this year. Rodeo second on that list with 19. Big Money and Bushwhacker have 15 apiece. Shaq had 14. Uh, Slow Talking Bo had 13. Cuz with 10. Frogger with 9. And Little Money with 8. So that kind of uh, the who's next, this kind of, this list here kind of spoke for itself. Yeah, yeah. There again, like I said, Willie's up the top there, 40, crazy, in a year. Alan, I know we both have new Daltra Pathfinder 2s. How are you liking yours so far? I'm liking it. I've even had the opportunity now to use mine where I didn't have service, where I download uh, the map of that area where I didn't have the service, and uh, it works flawlessly. Love it. I agree. I really like my Daltra Pathfinder 2 as well. I've, I've used it quite a bit the past few months. I really like the crystal clear maps. I like that it doesn't lose uh, service very much, and I, can't have, I don't have many bad things to say about it at all. Daltra Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar partner of UKC. Well, let's shift gears now to the to the blue tick breed. Got a lot of blue tick fanciers out there, and uh, they they seem to be kind of hot right now. Blue ticks seem to be uh, making a run at things. We had quite a few in our world finals just uh, this past year in uh, in Ohio, and uh, let's go through their top ten top uh, reproducing sires of all time as far as number of champion pups produced. And number one is going to be Grand Night Champion Uchman's Southern Blue Hawk. Uh, Hawk was born in 1981, bred by Tim Massey, and the owner was Lonnie Uchman. Yeah, from uh, Missouri, I believe they are. Uh, 914 pups, 72 night champions, 25 grand night champions, 97 total for Southern Blue Hawk there. 10.61% uh, is his number there as far as percentages. 
Uh, but yeah, uh, a name that is uh, very f- anybody, the, especially the blue tick guys. They all knew uh, know the Uchmans. That's a big name in the breed, and uh, the Uchman brothers have uh, certainly done a lot for the blue tick breed, um, and have had a lot of success with their line of dogs. We're going to be mentioning their name a lot, so hold that old tight on that one. <laughs> okay. But the second one here is from a guy right here in Michigan. Uh, number two horse, historical reproducers, Grand Night Champion, Northern Blue Jet 5, a dog that was born in the late 80s, 87, was his birthday, bred by Ronald Wigman and owned by Ed Mead and Rick Meyer. Yeah, Ron Wigman, he's an auctioneer in Fort Wayne, Indiana there, but Ed Mead, he just he recently passed away here in the last six months, I guess. But uh, yeah, one of, the, one of the Mead dogs, Jet 5, 967 pups he sired, 65 night champions, 23 Grand Knights, total of 88 offspring that are titled makes him puts him at number two on our list here sired by northern blue jet four and the dam is hoosier cc lady two that was a dog that was owned by mr ron wigman the jet dogs are synonymous with ed mead and his uh his legacy is living on i, I just uh corresponded with miss debbie hovius and jeff hovius and mm-hmm. they are uh, they're confident they have jet 12 right now so uh, yeah. it's still going yeah. strong yeah Number three, uh, Blue Tick reproducing sire of all time is Grand Night Champion, Grand Champion Smiley's Blue Rambo 2. Uh, Rambo 2 is a dog that produced 612 pups and 74 of them made at least Night Champion. 42 of them were Night Champions, 32 Grand Knights. So yeah, so like you said, 74 total, uh, 12% uh, reproduction record for titled pups. He was sired by Champion, Grand Night Champion Slife's Blue Rambo. And the dam is champion, Grand Eye champion, Smiley's Misty Blue, bred by uh, Marsha and Lonnie Smiley and also owned by Lonnie. Rambo, too. You know, I'm uh, being from northern Indiana. Is there's quite a few. Michigan and northern Indiana has a lot of blue ticks. And the whole lot has a lot to do with uh, Ed Mead and uh, uh, Dave, Dean. Dave Dean, you know. So you see a lot of uh, you see a lot of blue ticks in in our part of the country here, but uh, that Smiley's Blue Rambo is a name that you hear a lot even up in here. Yeah. This is maybe Dave Dean and and uh, and uh, Ed Mead country, so to speak. But you just still see some of these other names like uh, Rambo too, for sure. Yeah. Number three, kind of a, a hot time, a, a hot period of time for the blue ticks was the mid to late eighties into the early nineties. And this is a couple more here in a row from that time frame. here. This one here from 1987. And this is night champion Smoky river, JBS chief chief was out of night champion dry fork, blue spud and Smoky river BB's J bell. Yeah. He sired 793 pups is what he's got on his record. 46 night champions, 25 grand nights, a total of 71 total. Eight, almost nine percent reproduction record there, uh, but yeah, like you mentioned, that's a 1987 model or uh, model 1987 Smoky River JBS Chief Ronnie Wentland was a breeder, and uh, Warren uh, uh, Haus Hauslauer is that how you pronounce that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that was a that was a big name. I I apologize for that. Probably didn't uh, pronounce that correctly, and we apologize to the. Blue Dick folks for that, but uh, Warren Hoslauer, I think, is how you pronounce it. But that's a, they're, they're again another big name in the Blue Tick breed. Number four on our list, tied for number four, actually. Direct your emails to Alan if you have complaints. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, also, for some reason, oh, did you did you copy this? Or I'm not sure that's the spelled correctly on here. His last name. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, I'm going to question that a little bit. <laughs> I'll look it up when I get up to my yeah, my computer. We can check it out up there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tied with a Chief in fourth place with also 71, uh, night, at least night champion pup sired, is Grand Night Champion Uchman's Southern Blue Scout. Yeah, and here's he was sired by the dog we just mentioned, Uchman's Southern Blue Hawk, and then his dam was night champion, grand champion, PR Coors Blue Weedy. This dog was uh, born in 1988 already, bred by Mr. Mike Core and owned by Lonnie Uchman, who we uh, mentioned. Uh, but, yeah, 53 night champions and 18 grand nights for him. Yeah, another another late 80s dog. Yep, yep. Well, and fast forward to 1996, and we got another one. Champion, Grand Knight champion, Uchman, So Blue Hornet brings up, uh, comes in on the list on number six with uh, 65 of his 678 pups making Knight champion or more. Yeah, and he is off of the scout dog that we were just talking about, and his dam is Knight champion, Kooks Backwoods Bluebell. 
Uh, but yeah, forty nine night champion, sixteen grand night, sixty five total for uh, for him puts him number six on our list here. Bred by Kenneth Cuck and uh, again owned by Lonnie Uchman. Three generations up in the top six in the historical reproducers for blue ticks. Yep. What an accomplishment for yeah, those guys no from hawk to scout to hornet. No Incredible. kidding. Yeah. Number seven, another Autumn Oaks winner here, National Grand Knight Champion, Champion Grand Knight Champion, Northern Blue Levi. Yeah. 1989 model dog, uh, bred by James Grubb and owned by Ron Taylor. Yep. First dog I ever competed with or hunted or handled in a UKC night hunt was a dog off old Levi right here. Mm, but, there you uh, go, your heyday back yeah, in the yeah. late 80s, early 90s. Huh? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, 44 night champions, 19 grands. Uh for Levi here, 63 total, 7.6% uh, is what his percentage comes out here. He was sired by Northern Blue Jet 5, and his dam was Northern Blue Crystal, uh, bred by Mr. James Grubb and then owned by Mr. Ron Taylor from Indiana, Gosport, Indiana, I believe it is. Number eight on the list is another familiar name uh, from the mid to late 80s, 1986 model. Grand Knight Champion ca causes spare time spanky. Yeah, this was a big name back in the day. Ran the Perina series, you know, and was a big name in the blue tick breed for a uh, for a long time. Nine hundred and nine pups he sired. Forty night champions, twenty two grand nights for a total of sixty two. Uh, his percentage was six point eight five percent, but he was off of uh, 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 grand night champion, grand champion Russ's tree and blue Luke, and his mother was junkyard blue Peg. He was born in 1986, old spare time Spanky was, uh, bred by Mr. Scott Sevright and owned by the late uh, famous D Mr. Dave Dean. And then uh, Jerry Wynn and Bart Nation, I guess you've, I guess they owned they him. They were some, also owners during also his, owned him, his yeah. run. I Jerry, would say. yeah, Jerry and, and Bart both, they both handled him a lot in the in those series back in the day. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Moving on to number nine on the list, Grand Knight Champion Tucker's Blue Boomer. Boomer is responsible for 326 pups that have been sired, and 61 of those have ended up being titled out for a pretty good percentage here, 18.71% of Boomer pups. Yeah, no, so we're still in this here historical list here at number eight. We were talking about Spare Time Spanky, born in 1986. Now number nine is a dog that is uh, a lot younger, born in 2007. Terry Tucker here in Michigan is the owner and breeder here of Boomer. And this dog has put his stamp on a lot of the blue ticks, uh, you know, in the in the breed. 326 pups he sired uh, to date. 34 night champions, 27 grands, a total of 61 again here. 18% on uh, Boomer here. He is sired by night champion Quinn's Southern Blue Thunder, and his mother was Christian's Blue Gretchen. Uh, old Tucker's Blue Boomer. Terry Tucker from not too far here from the uh, office here in Kalamazoo. He lives here in Michigan. Fisherman. Terry does a lot of fishing these uh, days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good guy. He hunted a lot with old Mr. Ed Mead. We got uh, two blue ticks here uh, tied for 10th place on the historical list that we're looking at. Um, and I probably did them in the wrong order here, so I'm going to switch it up on you and keep you on your toes. Sure. But uh, the first one I'm going to is, is uh, and it has to do with their lineage a little bit. The first one I'm going to mention is field champion, grand night champion, grand champion, vining running bullet. Uh, bullet is responsible for 457 pups that he sired and 57 of them uh, were titled out for 12.47 percentage. Yeah. 39 night champions and 18 grands make up those 57 dogs. And he was off of night champion, Smoky river, JBS chief dog. We just mentioned a little while ago. Mm -hmm. And his mother was a grand night champion, champion, Smoky river, crazy's blue fly, uh, bred or born in 1993. Uh, uh, bred again by Mr. Warren and John Hoslauer, owned by Roger and Lee Smith there. Yeah. And the reason I wanted to do him first is we got another three generation here on us. You tied, mentioned uh, tied, yep. Chief was the sire of Bullet, and Bullet is the sire of this next dog that's mm -hmm. also tied for 10th, and that's Dual Grand Twin Springs Running Bullet 2. Uh, Bullet has 479 pups on the ground as of today, and 57 of them have achieved at least a night champion title. Yeah. Uh, 40 night champion, 17 grand uh, for 11.89 percentage. Yeah, tied with his daddy right there. That's kind of that's kind of cool. But uh, yeah, his uh, mother was Smoky River Jeans Blue June, uh, born in 2001, bred and owned by Mr. Lee Smith. So who could be next? Yeah, let's see. Uh, some of the blue ticks that you'll see right now on our current reproducers list. One would be 
a uh, fam- uh, pretty uh, well-known dog from up in Iowa, and that's Grand Night Champion 3 Prairie Creek Blue Botox, dog owned by Jason Schulte, bred and owned by Jason Schulte. Uh, Botox has 182 pups on the ground as of today, and 13 of them have uh, been titled out already. Yep, nine night champions and four grand nights there, and uh, he was off of a dog that uh, you hear a lot of, uh, champion grand night champion Goodson's Raudu Bocephus, and his mother was grand night champion Prairie Creek Blue Josie. Uh, Prairie Creek, that would have been a dog that owned, uh, also owned by Jason Schulte, but Jason has has had Botox in the world championship. Seemed like, I don't know how many times he got him in the world finals, top 100, you know, but several times I know of, but that dog did a lot of winning for uh, uh, for Jason, and uh, he's also uh, doing pretty good in the breeding shed, yeah. obviously. Looking at the list of pups produced this year by Blue Ticks, Botox comes in on third on that list, so yeah. he's uh, still go. getting it done right now. Yeah. Current number two reproducer is a Grand Night Champion Hall of Fame dog. That's Blue Ball and Rebel, a dog that's owned by Preston Street in West Virginia. Uh, Rebel has sired 186 pups as of today, and 13 of them have titled out. Yeah, so, nine night champions and four grands make up those 13 dogs. He's off of Grand Night Champion, uh, Grand Champion Vernon's Blue Mountain Banjo HTX2, and his mother was Grand Night Champion, Grand Champion Coates Ball Creek Blue Squirt. 2012 model, so he'd be about 11, about 12 years old right now, I guess, uh, bred by Mr. Charlie Coates. And as you mentioned, Mr. Preston Street is the owner there. And, and uh, yeah, he's done a lot of winning for uh, uh, for Preston. And uh, here again, doing pretty good in the breeding shed. Yeah. Another one that uh, is not only on our current reproducers list at number three, but also has uh, had four pups make have title out this year. So is on the top of that list, too, with the Blue Ticks is a dual grand Blue Creek Get Hooked. Uh, Get Hooked has 226 pups on the ground, 15 of them being titled out as of, as of today, 11 night champions of four grounds, grands as we're sitting here. Uh, from our guys up in the, it looks like the owners are from our guys up in uh, New England. Yeah, yep, yep. And he comes, uh, his daddy was Blue Creek Gage, a dog out of Ohio, owned by Mr. Danny Glista there in Ohio, and his mother was night champion Blue Creek Alice. And that was, uh, he comes from a, from a cross that, uh, uh, of, uh, from other dogs, uh, uh, several other dogs that, uh, made, uh, made their marks, you know, out of that cross right there, Gage and Alice, but, uh, yeah, Blue Creek get hooked. Owned by Ron Jackson, Dan Rainville. And our dairy farmer, I think, isn't Dan a dairy farmer? Is it a dairy farmer? Is he, he does something with dairy cows. When I look at his Facebook, all I see is him killing big deer. Yeah, that's about all I see on his Facebook. But, yeah, uh, he comes to the majors and always does good. Yeah. And I would assume uh, yep. some of his dogs have this lineage in the, in their pedigree. Yep, sure. Uh, number five current reproducer uh, on our list is Grand Night Champion Racket Ridge Crash. Crash is number five on our current reproducers list, um, and he also uh, is on the top uh, second in our list of number of title pups for this year uh, with six title pups already. And uh, he has t- only 225 pups on the ground, eight of them already uh, titled out. He's a 2015 dog, a dog that could have quite a few uh, more pups on the ground when it's all said and done. Yep, yep. And he is off of that Goodson's Rowdy Bocephus again and, uh, and a female named Illinois Smoky River uh, Bobby that was owned by Ed Mounty of Illinois here. Uh, but uh, uh, Crash is owned by Rocky and Riley Cundiff. Next one here, another dog out of Bocephus, which is crazy. The third one we've already mentioned in our current uh, top five reproducers. Uh, this is uh, out of Bocephus and a female named Dual Grand Shelton's Cotton Oxy, and this is Grand Night Champion Walston's Blue Big Country. Uh, Big Country has some pretty overwhelming numbers already to, to be where he is. 679 pups sired as of today with 44 of them being uh, titled. Yep, 27 night champion, 17 grands, right? And he is, again, here, Goodson's Rowdy Bocif is his, his daddy as well. So, uh, you know, that just uh, speaks for itself. His mother was uh, dual grand Shelton's Cotton Oxy. He was born in uh, 2012, talking about big country here, bred by Mr. Robert Shelton, and is currently owned by John Strickland and Ashley Oxendine. Uh, this dog, you know, is is probably one of the most famous currently, anyways, uh, blue tick dogs out there. And the one thing that he probably has on his uh, uh, resume more than any other blue dog, he has probably bred more off breed females than any other blue dog, I would think. There's quite a few. There's quite a few, even Walker females that they're taking to him, breeding to him. Yeah. 
I would say so. And when we're talking about people who can uh, put a dent in that top 10 historical list we're talking about, right now 10th place on that list is sitting at 57 dogs, 57 title dogs. Yeah. Big country has 44 and uh, 44 already and yeah. 680 pups on the ground, getting more every day, and a lot of them are young within yep. the past two years. He's going to blow into that top 10. He, he probably will for sure, you know, so, uh, but yeah. 16 already this year. Yeah. Titled out. Yep. So. That's uh Something. Uh, next one here is a pup out of big country that uh, uh, one that somebody mentioned to me when I was looking for it. And the numbers do not lie here. And this is Grand Night Champion Hall of Fame, Rock Creek Country Club. Uh, country Club, only 87 pups on the ground right now, but seven of them have already titled out in the in the hunts with a uh, bulk of them coming this year, five this year, good enough for third in the blue tick breed for this year. Yeah. So he's kind of a, kind of a hot stud dog right now. Yeah, he is just a 2017 model. So that makes him, you know, on our list that we're talking about those, that young. makes him kind of young, you know, but uh, David McGinnis is, was the breeder there and he's currently owned by uh, Matt Lingo and Terry Tappy. But it seems like they seem to, they've won a lot with him. I, I would, he's a consistent cast winner. That's for sure. Old country club. Yeah, and when I'm just trying to dig a who could be the next top reproducers, um, I went back to my mind, went to Crowder, of course, making yep. it into the final cast of the TOC, TOC this yep. past year, and who his sire was, and that's Grand Champion 2, Homebrew, bl uh, Blue Bow Diddley. Yeah. You would think when a dog makes it that far, he's probably going to see some more females come yeah. get backed up to him. Uh, Bow Diddley's only, 2012 model, got 69 pups on the ground is all as of today, uh, with six of them being titled out. So the dog that I, I would imagine is going to have a few more pups on the ground before it's all said and done. Yeah, he is uh, off of Males Blue Sue's Rattler in Green's Oklahoma River. Dixie is his mother. 2012 model bred by Mr. Richard Green and owned by Chance Irving. Yeah. And in the grand, scheme of, in the grand scheme of things, this dog here may not be, we're talking about current dogs that could bump onto the list. I, uh, we have to mention uh grand high champion goodson's rowdy bocephus we have already mentioned him three times yeah. i guess but yeah uh, it's 2008 dog so uh i don't know how many more pups he has in him if how much they have collected on him or what have you but the impact that he's had on the breed already he's 15th historically in the number of of uh pups sire that have made it into the uh may have titled out with 50 total pups that have titled and uh but not only his offspring, but their offspring seem to be making a huge impact yep. on the sport, and especially in the blue tick breed. Yep, they have, you know, he is off a of Double Springs Bodacious Granite dog, and his mother is uh, is Granite Champion Davis's White River Salem Sadie. Uh, when we mentioned Insane Jane, the second year that uh, Jane won the world championship, and then the year after that came back to finish second, Salem Sadie finished third right behind Jane that year. And, uh, Mark. So, yeah, Mark the all female Mentor. final cast. Right? It was an all female yeah. final cast. Yep. Uh, Split Creek history quick won it that year, and uh, Jane was second. Sale and Sadie was third, and a, a red bone female was ended up fourth. We'll move on to your uh, your old breed of choice here, the red bones. If you want to, uh, talking about the top uh, reproducing uh, red bone males of all time, and the number one is. Dual Grand Keys Outlaw Razor Red. Red was uh, has 364 pups on the ground and 58 of them that were titled out in the hunts. 15.93%. Yeah, yep. Uh, he was off of Thomas's Missouri Bruiser, just a PR dog there, and uh, and his mother was also just uh, not titled Markham's Red Kentucky Molly, uh, owned by the mailman down there in, in, in Kentucky. Uh, birth date in 1997, bred by Mr. Travis Thomas. And owned by Robin Katina Childers over here in Ohio. They're not far from where we have Autumn Oaks every year, but uh, Outlaw Razor Red is uh, he's yeah he's that number has that number one list uh, historical and uh, three hundred and sixty four pups sired. Yeah, he, this dog won quite a bit. He was he was originally owned by Mister Alton Key in Wisconsin, and the Childers uh, at some point acquired him and and kept on breeding him, bred him a lot, and he's reproduced a lot. 58 title pups is, is pretty high when you yeah, uh, compare to some of the others yep. in the breed. Number two here. Certainly put his stamp on the red bone breed for sure. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, you see uh, Razor Red was born in 97. This next dog was born in 2007. A few dogs on this list are going to be from way back in yeah. the day. So yep. it's, it's kind of interesting the the kind of differences there. But the next one, number two, champion, Grand Night champion, Fickens Deep Woods Rocky. 
Rocky sired 216 pups as of today, with 43 of them being titled out in the hunts. Yeah, 39 champions and 13 grands there has a 20% uh, 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 rating there, I guess. Uh, his sire was Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion, T-Top Rabble Rouser. That was a, kind of a big name in the uh, red bone breed from, uh, as, uh, from up in Wisconsin. Mm. And then the dam was uh, Grand Knight Champion Thomas's Midnight Music, uh, birthday to 2007, as you mentioned, bred by Richard Thomas and owned by Mr. Randy Ficken from uh, Missouri. And uh, Rocky was just a, I've hunted with him a time or two, just a very solid, what I would call a very balanced hound. And uh, Randy won a lot with him, and he is putting his stamp on the on the breed as well. Produced a lot of nice red red dogs. Absolutely. Going way back in time for not, uh, for the number three historical reproducer. The oldest dog here we've talked about, I think, isn't it? I think it? so. Oh, other maybe, I don't know, what was Lipper? 19... Seems like he was 81 or Met, 79 or 81. Something, something like 1974 that. here. Yeah, 1974. They're talking about Grand Knight Champion Hayes Ramblin' Red Ace. Ace sired 256 pups, 25 made night champion, 6 made grand for a total of 31, and he had 12.1 percentage. Yeah, his sire was night champion Baker's Rip, and his dam was Maddox's Daisy May. Like you said, uh, born in 1974, bred by, uh, don't have the breeder on here, yeah, actually. Yeah, we it's, didn't really start uh, keeping up with breeders till the computer system came around in 88, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, but he was owned by Travis Thomas and Ether Smith, uh, but at, at one time he was obviously owned by Mr. Terry Hayes mm -hmm. from Missouri. Hayes Ramblin' Red Ace, that's a big name uh, in the... If you know anything about red bones, you know, and go back a little bit. Ramblin' Red Ace is a name you see and heard of a lot. Yep. He's one of the old school red bones right there. One of the one of the other uh, famous red bones in the, in the history of the breed here at the number four historical reproducer, and that's Dual Grand Outlaw Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid was born in uh, March of 1991, bred by Teresa Key and owned by Roy Jeffries. Yep. 597 pups he sired, 21 night champions, nine grands for a total of 30. He was off of a very popular red bone uh, in those days, a grand night champion, grand champion Amos's Burning Ben, and his mother was grand night champion Keys Outlaw Jesse. I mentioned uh, Alton Keys. He's obviously who owned the Jesse dog there. Uh, Billy the Kid was a big, a big name back in the day for sure. He was born in 1991, bred by Teresa Key, who is Alton Key's wife. She's uh, she's passed since then, but most currently owned by Mr. Uh, Roy Jeffries in Missouri. But Billy the Kid was a good-looking sucker. I remember his ads that he used to have. He was just a nice, nice-looking dog. And I, uh, I actually had a pup that I bought off of Billy the Kid. I went to Roy Jeffries' house and drove there and picked up a pup one time and uh, – Remember, he whined all the way back, back <laughs> home. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, outlaw Billy the Kid. He put his stamp on on uh, on the breed as well. Number five historical reproducer is actually more of a, a kind of a current modern dog, born in two thousand seven, and that's Grand Knight Champion, the Red Rocker. Uh, like I said, born in April of two thousand seven, bred by David Gallagher and Todd Matthewson, and owned by Brian Genuine. Yep, two hundred twenty pups he sired. Uh, on his record, 21 are night champions and seven Grand Knights, total of 28 title dogs there. But he was off of uh, Grand Knight, dual Grand Knight champion Steps Little Pepper, and his mother was Nighty Knight Moonlight Kate. He was born in 2007 and owned by Brian Genoan of Missouri there, and that's one of uh, Randy Ficken's buddies over there. Uh, Brian, if you played golf or whatever, Brian might just – Put the hurtings on you. <laughs> I thought you were going to say take yeah. some of your money. <laughs> hey, but going back to Red Rocker, I know Brian won quite a bit with him, but Steps Little Pepper always felt like that's one of the most balanced red bones that I have ever hunted with. I really like that Steps Little Pepper. And his mother, uh, Nighty Night Moonlight Kate, was one of the winningest red bone females in history yep. of the breed. So that, that's the lineage behind Red Rocker. Well, we go from uh, modern times to, to back in 1980. And yeah. this is a uh, couple of dogs here uh, tied for number six. The first one we'll mention is Grand Knight Champion Metland's Red Fireball. Uh, 924 pups sired by Fireball. 19 Knight Champions, seven grands for a total of 26 
titled pups. Yep, he was off of a, just a Piardo, Melton's Big Red, and his mother was Millsaps Red Susie. That was uh, he was bred and owned by Mister Joe Melton from uh, uh, Indiana. Uh, yeah, born in 1980, but uh, yeah, old Joe Melton, he is Mister Fireball. You know, that's that was his strain of dogs, and that's kind of the the that was kind of our personal preference that strain of of dogs there that we had. Uh, pretty good success with so yeah here's melton's red fireball number six here yeah uh tied with him at number six is uh champion grand night champion hunters timber chopper uh chop timber chopper had 431 pups on the ground 21 night champions five grand night champions for a total of 26 yeah i called him old tc there he was off of hunters true two and his mother was grand's belmont queen born in 1963 he was the the name back in the day, old TC was uh, owned by uh, Max Hunter and uh, Timber Chopper. There's there's a lot of stories about old Timber Chopper, and I'm not going to get into much of it or whatever. But I remember one time, I think at Redbone Days, I think it was in uh, in uh, in the two nights there was nine out of them of them that placed at Redbone Days that were all off a of Timber Chopper. Wow. You know so. Always, I've heard it say before, you know, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, but he really, Timber Chopper was probably, as far as history of red bones and breeding goes, there's probably none that made a bigger impact on the breed than did Hunter's Timber Chopper. You'll see a lot of Timber Chopper in magazines and stud ads today. Absolutely. And also tied for sixth here, born a few years after that in March of 1971, is night champion Miller's. Is it uh, Virginia Woodpecker? Is that Val Woodpecker? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Miller's Val Woodpecker, and it was owned by Milton Strain. 816 pups on the ground, 18 night champions, eight grand for a total of 26 titled pups altogether. Yeah, born in 1971. Milton Strain, I think we talked about him a little while ago, but uh, or before we came down here, just you and I talking about him up uh, upstairs. Uh, he was... Uh, but yeah, here's a here's a dog that uh, put his stamp on the red bone breed for sure. He was off of a dog named Goodacre Punjab, and his mother was Night Champion Spurs Red Fanny, Miller's Valley Woodpecker. Probably with the reason it's abbreviated, maybe at that time I don't know if they just didn't have enough spaces or didn't allow as many spaces then. But uh, that's what it was, Miller's Valley Woodpecker. Gotcha. Then we got uh, three more here tied with uh, 25 total pups each. The first one we're going to mention is Dual Grand Brunswick Little Man. He had 854 pups sired, 25 of them made uh, at least night champion. Yeah, 20 night champions and five grands there. You know, and, and, and here again, there's a dog born in 1980, bred by Mr. James Witten. But back in those days, you know, uh, the, the night hunts looked a lot different. And uh, you see like his... His uh, sire, Brunswick Axel, is just a PR dog, and, and his mother, Kef's Red Jill, didn't have any titles either. But Brunswick Little Man was a big name in the red bone breed. And uh, oh, he was owned by Carol Williamson and James Butler. Brunswick Little Man. Little Man was tied for ninth here with Grand Knight champion Hoffmeister's Rusty Red. Rusty Red had 511 pups on the ground, 19 made night champion, six made it all the way to Grand for a total of 25. Yep, he was off of a dog named Go Man Sam, kind of a big name in the red bone breed. That was a night champion. His mother was Mahogany Sweet Lulu. He was a 1988 model bred by Larry Turpin, and his uh, owner was Harold Hoffmeister from Rolla, Missouri. Old Harold Hoffmeister. He bred a lot of good dogs, and old Rusty Red was one of his best. Mm-hmm. Uh, and kind of rounding out the uh, top 10 historical red bone reproducing males, is uh i guess a more modern one here from the late 90s and that's grand night uh dual grand t-top rabble rouser rabble rouser had 190 190 pups sired 10 of them were night champions 15 grand knights for a total of 25 um rouser was out of uh, grand night champion t-top tree talk and red rat and dual grand t-top rock and red raven yep those were wisconsin dogs we mentioned that tom solberg was actually the owner of those dogs co-owned this dog with dave patstern but a 1998 model there and tom did a uh, he had a he had some good he had a good pack of red bones up there he hunted uh, uh, a lot of those dogs you know not just coon but a lot of those were also big game dogs you hear uh, tim gilchrist from iowa he talks about 
rabble rouse or something, he's still got a lot of that stock and a lot of that blood through some of the dogs that he has. But and so do a lot of others. But yeah, old uh, Tom Solberg and rabble rouser and and all those dogs, they uh, they made their mark in the breed for sure. So who could be next to kind of bump into this list? Is twenty five dog uh, cut off for champions here to get in the top ten of Red Bones and yeah, there's Texas some, dog. Yeah, the first one here is a dog that uh, made it into the final cast of our Autumn Oaks just twenty twenty two already, and that's uh, Grand Champion, Grand Out Champion three, All Grand Outlaw G Man. He's our current number one reproducer. One hundred twenty seven pups on the ground, four night champions, five Grand Knights for a total of nine altogether. Yep, he is his uh, sire was Glistens Outlaw Jesse James, and that's actually uh, another dog that was originally owned by uh, 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 Alton Key in in Wisconsin. His mother was Outlaw Billy Jean. Uh, but yeah, Shane Maxey bred this dog and owned by Alan Halata. So anytime you see an entry from California in our world hunts or autumn oaks or something like that, you see a California entry, it's usually a uh, G man here owned by Alan Halata is the first owner. But, uh, Tony Dominguez is the guy from Texas that, uh, that he kind of owned the dog and handled the dog most. And he was also going with Shane Maxey, but yeah, G man, he's, uh, won a lot for Tony. Tony's, he's. Tony's probably going to tell you he's one, probably one of the best dogs he's he's owned and handled. Yep. Won a lot with him. Current number two reproducer uh, for the Redbone Breed is Grand Night Champion Crooked River Red Turkey, HTX. Uh, Turkey's got 121 pups sired, five night champions, two Grand Knights, seven total. Yeah. He, we mentioned the Red Rocker, you know, a little while ago. That's his daddy there, Rogers Ridge Running Rocks. He's his mother. But uh, uh, Travis Oliphant is from uh, Missouri and and uh, – Hey, Turkey's a pretty popular, pretty popular dog in the red bone breed, and he's done a little bit of, he's got some offspring there for sure, yeah. Third, uh, number three current reproducer is uh, Night Champion Grimes Lockdown Luke. Luke's got 123 pups on the ground as of right now. Two of them made Grand Knight, and it's the only two that he has titled as yeah. of today. Yeah, Hicks Rusty is his sire, and his dam is Simpsons, Coon Stretch, and Gretchen. That's a dog that's won a lot. Uh, she's out of, I think, uh, Missouri, close to the Oklahoma line there. Leonard Simpson owned that female right there, but that was also the breeder of this dog, and Mike Grimes owned this, owns this dog now. Yeah, and a, a dog that's not on our current reproducers list and not on our list of uh, for this year as far as number of pups reduced would be uh, Grand Night Champion Burgers Red Cocker Pistol. Just a name I see floating around a lot in red yeah, bone circles yeah, as far as yeah. a, an up a, a, a good stud dog and seeing a lot of good young pups out of this dog. Uh, Pistol has 107 pups sired as of today, two night champions and a grand night for three total. Yeah. Yeah, bred by Mr. Jay Call. He's a 2014 model, I guess, uh, owned by Clint uh, Clint Berger. Yeah. Kind of funny looking at the list of, uh, his, of uh, the best performing red bone sires this year so far. Deepwoods Rocky. He's still on this list, number two overall on the list, but still at number one this year so far. Uh, you see G-Man on here, Crazy Mountain, Big Hunk, Joe, uh, Mo Kentucky Moonlight, Woody, and Kaufman, Smoking Red Bug. So that's a couple to keep our eyes on moving forward. Could see a couple of these make their way onto a current reproducers list. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that kind of puts an end on the red bone breed for us there. So we covered three breeds in today's sit down. Yeah. The, the Trey and Walkers, Blue Ticks, and Red Bones. That's interesting stuff to go back through and just look at those numbers like that. And it's, uh, you know, the, the ones that really stand out, obviously, are the the historical list of the Trey Walkers, you know, some of those big names like that. And just the number of offspring they produced, not just that, but the number of titled offspring is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and we're gonna we're gonna got a second part that's gonna be coming to this. We're gonna talk. We're gonna tie up the rest of our top producing studs of all time. We're gonna go through English, Black and Tan, Leopards, Plots. So all that's gonna be coming up on a, on a, a coming episode. So this is gonna be a kind of a multi multi part series here. That's gonna be just fun to listen to. Yeah, and at some point we'll want to cover females too, but that's probably gonna be on its own uh, its own episode as well. So look forward to it. Thank you for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow so you don't miss any of our new episodes or content.